right along for this fall 2022 kickoff, and we are pleased to have with us on the line now none other than head football coach of the Prairie View a &M University Panthers, Bubba McDowell. How you doing today, my man? I'm good, my brother. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing absolutely well, and let me say publicly congratulations. Uh, as I said, as Sam Cook, it was uh, long overdue, and the change has finally come in your direction. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Now, before we get into uh, the, the weeds on things, um, a lot of people may not be aware, but you really endured a long time here at Prairie View, 12 years on mm -hmm. the staff, uh, seeing coaches come and go. What was it like for you to finally get the nod to say, Bubba, you're our guy? Ah, man, it was for me, Mike, again, like you said, it was, uh, um, it was perfect timing. It, it, it's what I call it, you know, and I will always say God's time because, again, you know, coming in with Heish, um, Northern, and, uh, with, uh, then with, uh, um, Dooley here as well, and then Willie here, uh, you know, it was, and then again, just to learn from those guys, you know, how to do this thing, you know, and, you know, and then, you know, and, and those guys also, you know, Great mentor guys, and you know, and always, and always used to say, you know, hey, you know, be sure, you know, this is what you want to do, you know, and that's pretty much everything in life, you know. Again, just don't jump into it because you think you can do it, or you are, you got that status, and you think you can do it, you know. Because again, if you're gonna do it, you know, jump in with the right mind so you can do it the right way, you know. And to me, again, it was honor to get named the head coach and. Uh, being the time that I spent here, 12 years, going to my 12th year, uh, it, it, was, it was good teaching, you know, for for this moment. Now, you may mention in the Heist Northern uh, defensive specialist under the two offensive specialists, Willie Simmons and Eric Dooley. If you could systematically, what did you learn under each one of these coaches that will help you jumpstart your head coaching career? Well, um, and for me, with, with with all these these three young, uh, got, I say young men, uh, they uh, coaches, you know, they, they they taught me the the value of uh, of being open. You know what I'm saying? Being open and 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 basically, at the end of the day, you you got to do it your way. You got to do it your way. You know, if, if you're gonna do something, you know, do it your way. Put your stamp on it. But at the same time, it, you got to be able to uh, you, you got to be able to communicate, you know. And that's from again, just just from the coaching staff to your players. And I pretty much had the players, you know, thing already, you know, kind of that tied down. You know, I, I know how to treat players, I know what to expect from the players, I know how to interact with the players. But more from the coaching side, what to do, what not to do, uh, how to do it, you know. Um, at a certain time, you know, again, do I do do we meet? You know, just because we, we we can or we should, or you know, hey, do do uh, do I let guys do do I let guys go not being that coach to uh, that want to just keep keep, keep uh, coaches around here, knowing that we got all have families. You know, you know, if you're doing your job and you're doing it the right way, uh, and again, our job is to teach these young men. And put them in places, you know, to uh, make place for us, uh, for this university. And that, that, to me, was some of the things that I picked up from all three of them. Because again, it's it's, it's about the coaching part. You know, we we all was, you know, pretty much players ourselves at some point, but totally different, Mike, than than than, than a player and transitioning to a coach. I could imagine so. I truly imagine so. Now, uh, you made uh, a reference to uh, putting your stamp on things. Um, I know you've yet to coach your first official game, but ideally, for those who are listening, what is the Bubba stamp for this program? You know, my, my, my thing is, is, again, just to make sure these kids – but doing the right way in the classroom and out on the field, because I, I always tell them again, you know, you you, you got to do it in, on the in the classroom. If you don't do it in the classroom, uh, 
I mean, it correlates you you're not doing the right on the field. If you do it right in the classroom, it correlates you doing the right on the field. And, and it's just, I don't know, it's not a scientific, you know, method of study behind it, but as coaches, we see that all the time. Or as a coach, I've seen it all the time. I've heard it, and, and I'll, yeah, I'll be the first one to say, eh, no, not really, you know, but, you know, let me see. But over the years, um, not, not, I mean, just here and other places that I've been, uh, scouting and, and um Interning, it's the same thing, man. I mean, they're 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 right on right on the point. I mean, if you get kids that's doing the right way uh, in in society, uh, social with the social media stuff going on now in the classroom, it's going to translate to the field, you know. And that's what I've been trying to teach them. You know, at the end of the day, you know, as I've always told my guys, you know, let's do it the right way in the classroom and on the field, and. First and, and, and last, not last, but I should say also my biggest pet peeve. A lot of guys, my kids, will tell you this all the time. I've always told, told them, uh, you know, when I'm when I was teaching them, you know, but as you know, out on the field, we have a little break and we talk, you know, about life in general. One come to me with every and everything, anything that you may have issues with, or hey, you just want to talk. You know, you just talk whatever. I mean, it ain't gotta be, it ain't gotta be bad. It, it can, it can be good as well, but that open door policy is always open. Secondly, you gotta be able to uh, treat people the way you want to be treated. Because I tell you, I tell these guys, you know, you go a long way when you do things that way, man. And you know, cause again, you, you know, if you don't do it, you know, out in the public, you, you're not gonna be able to do it with your teammates and, to me, if, if if that happens, then you're not going to be that ultimate teammate, uh, team player that you should be. And, and Mike, you know, well, I know that's you know these dudes got to play together all the time, you know, and that's the way you want to win. And I tell them all the time, dude, that's there's a lot of times in Miami, you know, guys may have seemed like they didn't like each other, but the one thing I can guarantee, you, we're on that field practicing for game day. It totally switches to like a team. Well, you know, that's the beauty of athletics and team sports. It's about the common goal, and that's to find a way to get this win, find a way to uh, come out on top, you know, uh, as a group. And personalities do class. That's part of human nature. But when you have that uniform on, in our instance, that purple and gold. I'm not necessarily there for the friendship, but the friendship would be great if it happens. But I want to make sure that the guy I'm next to is doing his job, I'm doing my job, and collectively we are lifting up a championship. And that's what really it's all about. Absolutely, because I mean, God, I tell them all the time, you know, everybody ain't gonna like everybody. You know, I mean, even in the coaching business, and I try to be honest and you know direct with these young men as possible. I say even coaches don't like each other half the time, but we have to respect each other. You know, I, as I tell them, I tell the coach, I said, look, man, I understand we may not all like each other. We all got different opinions, but at the end of the day, you know, especially you know now that you know I'm I'm at the helm and and and. We're going to do it my way. I said, we better figure it out before we go out on the field. We got some type of issue because if we don't figure it out, those kids will know that. And that calls for a disaster. But they, they, they won't, they'll see it and then they'll, they'll go left with it. So as coaches, we got to be on the same page, saying the same thing to these young men when we go out there teaching them. And, you know, not only on the field, but, you know, off the field as well. Yes, sir. We're speaking right now with Bubba McDowell, head football coach for the Prairie View a and University Panthers. And um, you you walked right into what I was going to ask you, Bubba. You know, it's one thing to be a part of the group. And now that you're leading the group as the head coach, how difficult or challenging, if at all, was it, you, was it for you to transition from being a part of the group to the leader of the group amongst some of your peers, some who may or may not be on the bubble plane, but they got to accept that you're the leader now and it's your way or the highway. Yeah. And, 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 and yes, yeah, very important. As you know, it's always, it's always a difficult time with certain guys, you know, certain coaches. Again, as I looked, I, I looked early, you know, coaches are all a 
different, you know what I'm saying? You know, and as I tell them, you know, I am the head guy, but ain't nothing changed about me. You, you guys know my personality. Y'all know what I'm about. Uh, and I, I expect you to match that. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't beat you up around the office. You know, I'm, I'm not a micromanager, but at the same time, you better be doing your job. If you're not doing your job, then I'm going to have to evaluate that at the end of the year. And whether it's good or bad, you no, know, that's on you, you know. And as a different, absolutely. <laughs> Taking this head job, you know, and I knew it was going to be that way. But, yeah, it's, it's something that, you know, that we go through as head coaches that, you know, uh, that we didn't go through as assistant. And that's part of the job. But again, I asked for this job, uh, just for opportunity, should I say, and I, I, I'm not just me, you know, and I truly believe that God didn't put me in this position to, to, to allow me to fail. And, you know, even though we got some, you know, things going on, which most schools do, but I do believe wholeheartedly might be, you know, we're going to get through it. No, as long as everybody again is on the same page, I think we can, we can, we can, we can make it happen faster than that. Not. Yes, that sir. Yes, sir. You know, that's a very solid note as well. You know, people try to magnify problems going on within their own personal interests of an institution. And it's across the landscape. Everybody's dealing with something. Some are, are magnified, some are kept so low that you think it's just a perfect green past on the other side of the fence. Yes, sir. Absolutely. It's not. Trust me, guys. I mean, when I tell you, it's not. Cause I, I thought to, I thought to. Uh, yeah, we all got our issues at, at our uh, universities. But uh, yeah, uh, it, it's not just here. It's, it's everywhere. I promise you. I thought the guys across the league and shit. Uh, I mean, they'd be surprised. You know, some school that that I've talked to is all. Oh, Really? That's all you got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you want to trade places, you know, and as I said, you never know how bad it is until you start speaking with other people. And you say, you know, Absolutely. let me keep my mouth closed and just deal and work with what I got. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. now, Bubba, it's, it's no, um, you know, hiding the fact we all have our, our praises and our critics, and, you know, you'll never please everyone. And, um, you, you know, you got people say, well, Bubba McDowell, why Bubba McDowell? You know, and, and how do you respond to that, or do you even uh, respond to that at all? I don't. I Honestly, Mike, I don't. Because, again, if, you know, I, and then just me, again, that's just my belief. You know, I know everybody has their own belief. Again, if it wasn't meant for me to be here, it wouldn't. It wouldn't happen. It wouldn't. I truly believe it wouldn't happen. And you know, again, it was the right timing, God's timing. I'm here right now, and like like you said, like you said earlier, not everybody's going to be uh, in agrees with you, and that's that's fine. And you know, like I mean, I had a question the other day. You know, oh, it's your first time as a head coach. You know, what do you plan to do? Are you going to be successful? I'm like, well, yeah. Well, you know. I, pl I plan to win, right? <laughs> yeah. What do you want me to say, bro? <laughs> yeah, I plan on winning. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah, no, I'm like, you know, yeah, as a head coach, yeah, I mean, this is my first time as a head coach, and I have this opportunity to uh, show that I can do it like that. And uh, I said, but, you know, you, everybody always asks that question about, you know, first time head coach. Well, at some point. Someone had someone had to be the be that first, be the uh, first time head coach. You yes, know? sir. Some some succeeded and some did. You know, and and, and again, you know, it's, it's all about how you put your program program together and to, to make your program succeed. Again, you got to have a good staff behind you, and that staff has to be one of those staff that, at the end of the day, uh, you got. To Go out and recruit good guys because uh, if you don't go out and get and get good talent, you ain't gonna. Be. I don't care what you do, or how you do it. You just adding kids on, just add them on. Yeah, it, it, you gonna have issues. You gotta have dudes that can go out, recruit, you know, get the top guys. You know, the one possibly now with the NIO, uh, new NIO rules, or you know, those second and third tier uh, athletes that you know again that would. That would probably go somewhere, but again, can't go and can't go to the big boys because there's no room for them. There. So the next step is, you know, it's the uh, HBCU, you know, the lower FCS schools. So you know, we 
got to get out there and recruit because if you don't get out there and recruit these young men, uh, the best talent, you're, you're not going to have a chance. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You know, there's no saying, Bubba, old country saying you might appreciate this. You may have heard it. You don't know if a mule can pull until you hook him up, right? So when it's your first time, you know, or your hundred and first time, you know, uh, hook me up and watch me do my thing. And so that's what it's all about, just going out there and getting it done, working with what you got. Now, of course, Eric Dooley is at Southern University right now. You guys are coming off as defending Western champions. Left with some talent, but as we know, it has been uh, duly noted, and no pun intended, that some of the talent decided to move on, and that's okay. That's part of the game. Uh, with what you have remaining, and you made the mention and the emphasis of recruiting, has that been challenging for you coming out of the gate? It has, it has, you know, and again, I don't want to get into, uh, everybody don't make it, and I'm pretty honest, but I don't want, I don't want to get into, you know, particulars about why it was difficult, but just know that, you know, we, we had some issues, uh, but I do believe that, you know, we are going to get it, get it done, get it done, you know, uh, and that, that will help us, you know, get back to where we need to get to. You know, we we're, we're sitting in a good spot right now. The best spot? No, absolutely not. But we're at the spot, I truly believe. Now, you know, if we go back to the coaching part of it, now I'm going to have to be able to motivate and get these dudes ready to go. Yeah, we missed out on some dudes uh, early in the year. Uh, and, no, we can't. Again, like I told the coaches, hey, we can't worry about it. It's done. It's over with. We got to go with what we got right now. And, you know, again, we just need several more pieces, you know, to help us uh, to get what we need to get to, to get back to that championship and, and win it this time and, and, you know, go on to that celebration bowl and win it. Yeah. But, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. That is the common goal. Now, uh, with that being said, without revealing too much of your depth chart right now, if you could, Bubba, walk us through some of your key players on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Okay. Well, we'll start with Trayvon Collins, the quarterback. You know, Trey came in the second half of Jackson State last year, and uh, he sparked us up a little bit. You know, but fortunately, we you know we didn't we didn't win it. And again, everybody knows we should have won it. And I'm gonna stop saying that. Just gonna be my last. That's gonna be my last top ten. Uh, but yeah, we're looking at big things for him, man. He's uh, he just got back in, uh, and a lot of guys, uh, the offensive side anyway. We're, we're in the process of getting more different guys in uh, before August second uh, comes around. At least we try, so we can just at least try to get get some type of running with with those guys here with no strength conditioning guy. Uh, so again, back to Trey, we 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 looking for big things uh, to happen with him, man. And I think we uh, we got the weapons around him to uh, help him. Uh, uh, Jaden Stewart, you know, uh, Mosley, you know, Double A, you know. I'm sure the backfield is loaded. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't, you know, it's always to have a, 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 a good problem. And, you know, when you have that many backs back there, uh, that can that can take it to distance. Uh, so we're gonna be pretty loaded uh, with those guys in the um, in the backfield. O line really big, really really big. You know, Chance Chance Jones, uh, you know, pretty athletic guy that can go across the board. You know, from guard to center tackle. Uh, I think we're gonna start him at center uh, right now. Uh, and then we got Aaron Taylor, you know, big dude. So we're, we're pretty we're pretty heavy across that across that front line. Uh, you know, DJ White. Now DJ, we you know DJ about six three ish four somewhere around there, and you know, probably about you know about two thirty five two forty, big tight end. You know, now we're looking for him to. Uh, you know, to turn it on this year. I mean, he, he came back, uh, graduated, came back, you know, as a grad and since last year. And, you know, we're looking to uh, exploit him a little bit more on matchups, you know, because he's a big dude. He's got okay speed, you know, big body, get in front of some of those linebackers, you know, and he, again, exploit those guys and you know, get the ball to him, see what he can do. You know, Jalen uh, Howard on the outside, uh, Got a little speedster, you know, Jalen 
can play outside. He can play uh, inside. You know, we're looking to put the ball in his hand a little bit more as well. Uh, as well as everybody know, Trey, Trey uh, the Spiller, um, you know, phenomenal, phenomenal wide receiver. You know, he's coming back. You know, and we got. Looking for Metcalf, uh, Eric Metcalf's son, you know, uh, he came to transfer in from, uh, I think it was a, oh God, I'm drawing blank. I think it was, uh, Eastern Michigan. Yeah. I, and I don't quote me a mic wrong, but, you know, he's coming up for, uh, ACL. Looks really good. Again, we kind of did our due diligence before we, we decided to bring him in. Um, uh, again, Eric brought him up, met with him. Met with him in the, and, you know, everybody knows that, you know, again, you know, Eric Metcalf, you know, one of the top NFL guys. His son can grow, you know, he can definitely go so film before and after, you know, the ACL. So that's why I was, you know, nah, this dude can go, you know, and show us some stuff that he was actually working out after the surgery. He looked really good. He's 6'3, you know, he's probably right now about 4'6, and I think we'll get faster, but he going to be somebody that can is that is long and that can go up and get the ball. So we definitely gonna need somebody like that on the outside. Defensively, uh, you know, we got the front four, Jesse Evans, you know, Troy Jane, Dante Carter, you know, Kevin Victoria. So we you know, and we alluded to earlier about, you know, we lost Jason Dumas back going back home to uh, Louisiana, Louisiana with Dooley. Uh, but we got you know, Isaiah Hunt, who was here with us, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, had a great issue. Went back to JC, got the grades right. You know, again, he was out of uh, Jones College when we first got him. And again, was expecting him. He was doing great, doing great stuff on the field, but he wasn't doing quite so well in the classroom, which caused him to get, you know, to leave. And then now he's back. So he's going to pretty much take care, you know, hopefully take care of that doing a spot. You know, one thing I can say, uh, Mike, is that for the first time, we've got a three deep, uh, group in the D line. And as you guys know, most people know who know so far, as I tell my guys in the backfield, you better make sure you take care of them dudes. I know that's right. I know that's right. And look, and that, <laughs> I can see the rotations working right now to keep those guys fresh for that back half of the game. Absolutely. You got Trey Green, you know, outstanding linebacker. I think Trey going Trey gonna to blow it up this year. He's actually, uh, him and Trey's on going, we leave tomorrow. They head to the uh, swag media, uh, thing in, um, media day in uh, Birmingham. So, you know, I'm taking Trey's on con and, you know, Trey Green, uh, linebacker. Cause Trey's going to be, you know, he, he's going to be that dude. And a lot of guys coming in like, hey, man, this dude got that NFL body, like, right now. So they just waiting on him to uh, come out the bubble, man, and just dominate, which he can, which he could definitely do. That. I didn't realize how much, how well he can cover as a um, as a linebacker, you know, all these years. I'm watching him during spring, had a great spring. And we know, you know, we run the 4 two, 5 and normally, Put that nickel in there, but we just know the three tray and see if he can cover. Oh my God. <laughs> he was doing, oh, and again, that's, that's good because I want to see him do that as I uh, talk to some different scouts, you know, and I tell guys all the time, but man, you guys got to be able to do multiple things, man. The more you can do it, the more your stock is going to go up, you know. So Trey back there, you know, Shaheen. You know, number 52, uh, middle linebacker, but, uh, he's, he's gonna be a big, big improvement. Came on late in the uh, season, uh, and helped us out big time. You know, Warren Shankles coming back off that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, knee injury, uh, he's gonna be, he's a, he, he's just a football player. I mean, I, you know, when he got hurt last year, it was just as a freshman. I mean, it, uh, I, it, it it didn't hurt us, but it hurt us. You know, cause we could have been so much better back there in that, in that, uh, in that linebacker position. You know, that group is by far the most talented uh, of, of, every, of the whole group. Uh, I would say the whole team because they, they got some dudes back there. And hopefully, uh, Jeremiah Harris, uh, from Shadow Creek as well, they transferred from Kansas, who, uh, went down with the ACL. Hopefully he back ready to go full time. You know, he was dominating before he had that injury as well. Uh, 
now going back to that secondary, you know, we're, we're pretty young back right there. Uh, you know, only two, 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 uh, two veterans back there is, uh, you know, Logan Jackson. Uh, again, I'm waiting on Logan to just, you know, get back to that freshman stage that he were when he first came in. Him and uh, Drake Cheatham, you know, because, yeah, uh, you know, he's one that we all lost to uh, Kansas. Kansas State, you know, he, he went in the portal, went up to Kansas State. And so Logan and uh, Jemiah Presley, you know, from Jacksonville State, two of our veteran guys back there. So we, we're looking forward to, again, on the edge, those guys, you know, turning it up another notch. Uh, and hopefully the young bucks, you know, can come in and um, come in and help. You know, we, we had an opportunity to get, to get some guys back there, but again, you know, I'm not gonna harp on it. We we we, we didn't do it because we did, we wasn't in the right position at the time to get them in. So they they had to move on. And but I, I think we can. You know, we got some dudes that that's being uh, that's committed. Uh, I think can really help us out back there. And again, as you know, we got to be able to rotate back there as well, especially you know in the swag. Because much of uh, guys throw throw on this you know, on this level. You know, safety, you know, we got Bryce Turner, we got you know, Tariq Melmore back there, so we got, you know, we're gonna get, we're gonna, we're gonna be pretty good back there as well at the safety spot. You know, our only issue, you know, again, just, you know, depth wise, you know, who can we, uh, count on and, and just wait and see if some of the young bucks going to emerge now. And I say young buck, you know, we got, uh, DeJuan Lewis from Shadow Creek. I think he's gonna be that freshman that comes in and compete, and 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 and, be, and now when I say compete, he, he's gonna come in and compete and probably, you know, contend for a starting position. He, he's that dedicated, that young man. Something he's here now in the British program, and he, he's, he's a different dude, man. He's a different dude. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, you sound like you excited and ready to go right now, man. I, 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 <laughs> I was, I was, you know, again, not able to have the guys in like I wanted to, but, you know, seeing them come in on their own, uh, last week, you know, when I was walking up, uh, walking up, uh, to a campus and then watching them, then I, I walked through the back gate and I heard the whistle out there. I said, oh, okay, let me make a detour. So I went down to the field, the back way to the field, and then I saw all the guys. You know, we, cause we had only had five or six guys in at the time. And those are the guys that had to come to summer school. But then walking in and watching them guy, all the guys, about 30 of them out there, and the, and the majority of my offense trades on and all the guys, the majority of my offense. And, you know, I got you at that point. That's okay. Now, I think we, now we get it ready because now these kids are, they're dedicated. You know, they know, they, they know what's going on. We talked about it on our team meetings. Yeah. They accept the challenge and, you know, and they came in on their own. And like I said, it was good to see that. And, you know, and this is a good step in the right, in the right direction. You got guys coming in and, you know, doing things on their own, you know, and that just, to me, that showed a lot of leadership, you know, and that they want to get this thing done so we can get back and again win this thing and then get on to that celebration bowl and win it as well. Yes, sir. That sounds very inspirational. Uh, before we move on, man, you was mentioning the Metcalf family. Uh, I know you may mention him, uh, Eric Metcalf, but his father, Terry Metcalf, uh, mm-hmm. used to run for the St. Louis Cause I grew up watching that guy, man. And that was one bad fellow, man. And uh, you, you, I know you played along with Metcalf, you, uh, Eric Metcalf. Yeah. But his daddy, my God, man, he was something <laughs> special, man. He was doing stuff. Uh, well, that Eric did, you know, he was a running back. He wore number 21. He was returning punts. And every now yeah. and then, uh, when they needed a spark, he would return kickoffs. But, man, and he was a little bitty fella. You know, and I heard you say his grandson is 6'3". He, uh, Eric must have married a tall woman or something because. <laughs> like I said, when they walked in, I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Oh, we're talking right now with Bubba McDowell, head football coach of the Prairie View a m University Panthers. Now, Bubba, it's uh, always exciting uh, to start a new season off, but you have the unique task of playing 
uh, a rival, the wear maroon and gray. And uh, I don't want to put no pressure on you, Bubba, but uh, it's been it's been <laughs> it's been seven consecutive years, man, that yeah. Prairie View has won this Labor Day Classic. And uh, like I said, not putting any pressure on you, man. Uh, but when if we're going to be, as they say, legitimate and keep it 100, it seems like it's going to be a different Tiger program this season. Do you see the same thing? I do. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've kind of seen some things that are going on over there. And, uh, yeah, getting it up. Yeah, he's getting it done. You know, and, and, I, and I guess a lot of it has to do with, you know, the transfer portal and, you know, being able to get kids in and, uh, you know, you know, the, the, I guess one of the great, the great thing for them, good thing for them, should I say, is again, being able to have the kids the first and second summer session. You know, now they all yelling together. You know, and that's always a plus. Yes, always sir. A plus. Yes, sir. We'll see. You know, I, I think everybody got got a whole lot better in the swag this year. You know, due due to the uh, portal. You know, and all the. Um, uh, number of uh, good athletes from the JCs uh, this year, as well as the high school. Uh, so, yeah, is it going to be different? I, I, I truly believe it is. Yeah, uh, it's going to be. It's going to be a good because again, I know, I know McKinney is getting the guys ready to go over there. You know, and we, you know we're definitely up for the challenge. I promise you that. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Now, uh, I heard you may mention that you still stick with the four two five, and um, offensively, I'm assuming it's going to be the same spread look. But are there any different schemes that you're going to incorporate under the Bubba plan? Yeah, I mean, just more. I want to go defensively. I want to uh, off. I mean, so our offense. No, I mean, again, we just we want to be able to get the ball. We want to get the ball and our athletes in. You know, with the spread, and again, you know, we, we'll probably do some two backs as well because we got so many backs back there. You know, we're big up front, so we got to be able to run the ball. You know, that's that's going to be our first and foremost uh, strategy. Again, is to try to run run that thing, and with the big boys we got up front. So, but defensively, I you know mentioned to Coach Middleton. You know, although although we we still a little heavy, I mean, a little light. In the uh, backfield, I want to. I want to do a little bit more man. I want him to do a little bit more man, so that means he got to do a lot more blitzing, a lot more zone pressure uh, with that four two five. And uh, let's see what we let's see what we can do with it. So I'm hearing a little more aggression coming from the defensive side. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. But, you know, like I said, we got. We got, you know, again, three deep guys back there on, on up front, and you know, we, we got to be able to use those guys to the best of their ability. You know what I'm saying? Because they can, they can go, so we got to be able to use, use all of them. Okay, know? okay. That sounds real good. That sounds real good. Now, uh, Bubba, if you could, for those who are listening and who might not be as in tuned as uh, some of your hardcore fans, can you run through your coaching staff real quick? Yes, offensive coordinator is Mark Frederick. Uh, O-line is uh, Ashton Green. Uh, wide receiver is uh, Reggie Moore. Reggie's here with us with Willie Simmons and then went to uh, Colorado State. And then uh, now he's back. And, again, he's a local guy you know, from Madison High School. You know, my reason for bringing him back again is because he has local ties. And he want to get try to keep it, uh, you know, hit this area hard. Um, as well as Dallas area. Uh, so he was he, he, he came back, said he would, and he did. Um, Marcus Bradley is the running back coach. Uh, he's all there. So GA, uh, you know, we're going to run and keep, keep crazy around here right now to GA. So all you guys that want to be GA is out there. <laughs> the past. I know that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> Defensively, we got Coach Middleton, Todd Middleton. Uh, he's our defensive coordinator, D-line coach. Uh, coach Al, Alvin Fossum, who's our uh, linebackers and special team coach uh, this year. And Ryan Burton, again, he's uh, coaching Nichols and Safety. And right now, still uh, waiting on. Uh, we had Hurley Brown in uh, with the uh, secondary brought him in from my high school and we all early and uh, played together at Miami. Um like I said, local local neighborhood dude, good great guy, but he decided he wanted to go back to high school. And so con- uh, currently 
currently uh, getting ready to uh, hire another deep defensive back guy. Not sure who yet, but I got three guys in mind. And we just go from there. And meanwhile, I you know Nia Ryan be back there taking on that task, you know, uh, with the secondary. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Now, Bubba, I have a Mike Prince, uh, I guess I would say concern. And it's, it's a consistent deal because I've always felt the talent was there. Okay. But discipline. And when I say discipline, I'm talking about uh, unnecessary penalties. You're going to get some penalties. Uh, but to me, lining up all size is a discipline. Uh, oh, yeah. Personal penalties, that's a discipline. Um, uh, as a request, this is a Mike Prince request, please address <laughs> the discipline concerns, please. Oh, no doubt, Mike, absolutely. That, that's that's first and foremost. And, again, you know, and, and I charge my coaches to that. So, again, if they, if they don't take care of it, I, I will. If I have to get involved with it at that point in time, like I told the coaches, if I have to get involved with all sides, and, um, and, again, we know what's going to happen, but then if you – at some point, just feel like you ain't getting it done. Uh, I feel like you're not getting it done, should I say, and disciplining these guys, whether it be after practice, before practice, or something, then I'm going to have that problem. And then if I, if I got to address it, that is going to be a problem. You, know, you and I are not talking. Yes, sir. Well, you know what, Bubba? I think there's a, a misunderstanding about who Bubba McDowell really is because – uh, you're kind of a low-key, mild-mannered guy, but yeah. you, you played in the NFL for an extensive period of time, and you couldn't have lasted long, especially in the era that you played in, if you didn't have a little nastiness in you and a little dog in you. Yeah, I, I mean, I got a little mind coming a little bit. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was a true Miami guy because I never used to talk like that. You know, and then Richard Johnson used to say, oh, come on, man, you need to freaking celebrate a lot more when you make a good play. And that's why they always putting, uh, you know, at water and, 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 and block. I mean, running a lot of them guys in front of you, man, even though you got better stats, you know, they always put no guys in front of you because they be celebrate. Dude. You got a lot to celebrate, man. Uh, that's, uh, that's not me, man. I know that's right. Let, 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 let me get it done, and I celebrate when the check clears. Yes, <laughs> well, look, Bubba, I really want to appreciate you, man, for uh, giving your time uh, for our listening audience, and it is always a joy and a pleasure. And uh, we want to wish you nothing but success in this uh, inaugural season for you leading the Panthers. But I want to give you an opportunity to have some closing thoughts and comments, sir, and the floor is now yours. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, man, to all the support that um, people have given me you know, through this transition. Man. Very, very appreciative and grateful. Again, I know um, God has things, you know, already planned out, uh, whatever that may be. You know, I just got to follow that plan. And uh, like I, said, I can't thank people enough for, you know, just, just helping me get through this transition. And yes, we, we've had challenges. We still have challenges, but we are getting through it. And I think we're going to get through it uh, on the good end, come out of good on the on other end, come out really good, should I say. So, and more importantly, come on out, support us, you know, good or bad. Just come on out, support your Panthers, man. And just let's, 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 let's fill those stands. You know, I, I want to, I made a joke, uh, during our caravan tour the other day, you know, to Dallas this past weekend and, uh, back, back at the Houston at Top Golf. And I was telling some alumni that, hey, I want to be able to see, you know, more TV than I see Southern, you know, on that side. Everybody know how Southern travels. So I, and I was making a joke and everybody, yeah, everybody just started laughing. You know, so come on out. Let's support, you know, PD football, PD athletics as a whole. You know, let's, let's take this thing to another level. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And speaking of another level, uh, we're excited to announce that uh, Bubba will continue uh, the little legacy that we start here at the Open Mic with the Weekly Coaches Show. And I'm looking forward to that, Bubba. And thank you for accepting the invite, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Anytime. Okay. You always been. 
you, big dog. So I'm, I'm here for you. Well, we're here for you as well, my friend. He is Bubba McDowell, head football coach at the Prairie View a and University Panthers. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince, reminding you that you can follow me on Twitter at The Mike Prince Show. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And be sure to visit the website at obmradio.com. And until the next time, you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.